So welcome everybody to another talk on knot theory. Okay, and um, just want to tidy up a few things and um, next Friday, we've got Dale is going to take my slot. Which, uh, if I can find out how to share. So, um, here we go. Can you all see that? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's good, Rog. yeah. Yeah. You can. Yeah. Okay. So just um a few things to point out. Uh, there's a paper here by Damiani. It's in the archive. I guess it was published, but I don't know the reference. A journey through loop ray groups. At the end of um, the last talk, Scott, I think it was Scott, mentioned uh, what about um, loop braids? I mean, which is uh, moving disks or, or circles in R3 and they form a group um, and if uh, if you just unor if they're unoriented then they're the same as the welded braid groups which uh, Colin I and, and Rimanyu wrote about uh, and other people as well um, and I also, if you orient the circles, they, it was not, I, I assumed it would be the, um, the, um, the group of automorphisms of, of the free rack, but it's not, it's, um, it's something else. So that's quite interesting. Anyway, if you want, to, there's quite a, quite a good paper. It's got lots of information in it and history as well. <coughs> uh, although Colin claims that we were the first to do the sort of proof of the presentation. Right, now the next paper, this is, um, this is something I had from uh, Sergey, so I'm sure he won't mind me uh, showing his um, his email and I talked about these codes which define an immersed curve in the plane and apparently these codes are known to combinatorialists as the group of signed permutation. So that's very interesting. This is the full symmetry group of the n-dimensional cube. It can be thought of as a group of permutations S can you see everything? Maybe I should make it yeah. a bit taller. Um, it's fine, Rog. Is it? Yeah, we can see it. You can see it. Oh, sure. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. We've got um, instead of the numbers one up to n, we add the numbers minus one down to minus n, and then you use uh, anti symmetry here. So, uh, so if you. Remember that I, I had a, a dashed uh, number. Well, that's replaced, that can be replaced by a minus number. And so this is how you get uh, this group of full symmetries. And so my figure eight code, four dash one, two dash three means instead of, um, so one goes to four dash, but that's really now been replaced by minus four two goes to one, etc., And then uh, we use anti-symmetry to define uh, the rest of the values. Um, question is whether this group operation on codes can be interpreted geometrically as a certain modification of the curves. Well, they actually define the curves um, uh, when they're realizable, but 
there's something called Arnold's invariance, J plus, J minus, and ST of immersed curve. And so they should be um, definable in terms of these, um, these permutations. So um, I haven't actually tried hard to do that, but presumably some of you could. Um, and so that's, thank you for that contribution, Sir Guy. Right, I just want to talk about dominance again. Okay, this is, so this is an R3 move and the crossings are labeled by tags X, Y, and Z. And uh, depending on how you look at it, this, either you think of this arc as traveling down to this one or this arc is traveling across to this one. So there's three ways of looking at it. Anyway, we call it R3, X, Y, Z. But in practice, you only have two tags um, and they all boil down to whether something dominates when, you know, say, say something goes over um, a crossing or under a crossing. So these statements are equivalent. So X dominates Y is the same as R3, X, X, Y. So, um, so this, this Y here would be placed by X and this would be placed by Y and so on. So there's, there's three statements here. Um, you, you need to do R2 moves in order to prove that they're the same, but um, I won't give the details here. So, and the other thing is R4, which I kept talking, I was going to talk about, and, and that's a kind of commuting um, arrangement. So A and B here are interchanged. That's one form of R4. And in the other form, as it changes, if, if, B, if bar B is different from B, then it, um, it does this, you see. So, and then we've got little notation for this. And, and this comes up with singular knots. So if you, a singular knot is a knot in space in which some of the crossings are glued together on a black disc like this, or it could be a white disc if it's the inverse. Um, and then Colin, myself, and um, uh, Mercedes Jordan proved that the, this uh, braids formed from these embeds, um, sorry, the monoid, of course we haven't introduced a white disc yet. Well, if you introduce a white disc, you don't lose anything. Uh, and I'm gonna talk more about that in a minute, okay. But anyway, if you think of this disc, if you flip it over, then this uh, curve here, this, this twist here goes to this end here, right? Okay, so that's an example of R4. Um, and there's more. For free knots, um, Manchurov uh, has looked at free knots. And in this one, you just flip a virtual crossing to the other side of a flat crossing here. And then, and then something which uh, Lou does is you've got a positive, well, not necessarily positive, but you've got a crossing here in which underneath, uh, this, this arc goes underneath this arc, and then you, you flip it, but it still goes underneath, but instead of from the bottom, it goes underneath from the top. Are you there, Lou? I don't know what's happened to Lou. Okay. So that's the, that's examples of um, of this a new Rider Meister move R four. So um, and then the knots you get from here, we've decided to call them the swap knots because they swap the um, swap a positive uh, crossing to a negative crossing and vice versa. 
Okay, so now I want to talk about generalized braids. So we've got a, a knot theory with tags on the crossings from some set. And let IM be the first N integers, the natural ordering. A generalized braid representative of length, length M is defined by a function from IM to IM minus one cross T, okay? Um, and the integer N is called the string number. Now, okay, there's a bit of chat here about we make, we can make vertical bridges and so on. It's probably best if I just show you a diagram and then you'll get the, the um, um, you'll get the picture better. So here's a diagram of um, a generalized braid. Okay, so we've got three tags. In practice, you only have two or one even. Uh, but anyway, um, so this is on level two, C is on level one, B is on level three. And you can replace those bridges by crossings. Okay, so that looks more like a braid then. And this has a monoid structure. So um, you can, you know, multiply concatenation in the usual way. And um, so alpha beta here, you're multiplying to get alpha beta. And this multiplication is associative um, because all ordered sets, now I didn't uh, bring that out, are considered equivalent. So the sets are the, the set of ordered numbers along the real line, um, which um, here I'm, if, if they've got the same number of elements, we just consider them to be the same. It's very convenient to do that. Okay, and then, and then you've got a well-defined associative monoid product. Uh, well, when I say monoid, it's just, it's, um, we haven't said what the, in, what, um, what the identity is yet. Well, that's pretty obvious. Okay, so we can multiply them. And we can also stack them, okay? So I can stack um, one braid on top of the other, okay? And I write it as a row vector, alpha, beta. Now, the perceptive people amongst you will say, yes, but what about this? If you're gonna stack them like this, you've got a new set M plus N down here. Uh, you know, if this one's got M crossings and this one's got N crossings, how are you going to fix it? Well, in fact, it doesn't matter. You can shuffle them in any way you like because of the basic rule of braids. Oh, by the way, another, sometimes people write the alpha tensor beta for this. Okay. Um, if you look at the generators, Okay, so here's a generator. It's, um, it's just a, a brick crossing here, labeled by A, and we call it AI because it's at the ith level. Okay, now let T plus be the subset of the set of tags T. So how do we define the positive tags? Well, A is, um, in this set if a bar equals a and if a bar is not equal to a okay so remember i said that a bar equals a is a two-dimensional tag and if a bar is not a that's a three-dimensional tag then we choose one of these to be in t plus but not both okay so these are the generators of them of what's going to be a monoid illustrated above so we're you just choose the positive um, elements, T plus. Let I denote the identity element and let A stand for A1 in B1. So I haven't said what B1 is, but um, I don't think. Anyway, you know what it is. It's just the set of 
with just one strand um, or two strands. And then you've, okay, so where are we? The generator AI can be written as this row, row column vector, oh sorry, row vector. Put an A in the if, if place and you call that AI, okay. And then historically the generator for real braids is written as sigma I, okay. And if we go back to our example, then this uh, braid here can be written as this word A2, C1, A2 because it's on the second level, C1, and then B3 because it's on the third level. No, 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 not so. And there's another way of looking at it in terms of crossings is to bridge it. It's sometimes convenient to use bridges. Okay, so where are we now? Now, there are relations and we're going to call them B1, B3, and B4. So the first relation, B1, is always allowed, okay? And that says that if two bricks are separated, then they commute, okay? And this is always true, and this says that AIBJ is BJ AI for all, uh, provided the distance between I and J is greater than one. So now if you go back to stacking, you can see why it doesn't matter where you put um, the points on the base, the M plus N points in order to define this stacking because where, you know, you've got this commuting uh, arrangement here. So it doesn't matter where you put them. Okay, so the next two relations depend on the allowable moves of the theory. Okay, so suppose R3 ABC is allowed. Okay, so that's a, a, a Reitermeister 3 move. Then we have the following relations, uh, which is like this. And if we look at it in terms of generators, AI BI minus one CI is CI minus one BI AI minus one. But in practice, we only have uh, two, really say A and then A dominates B, which implies that this relation is true. Now, if you have that convention, it saves a huge amount of time. You, you know, we've all seen those papers on braids in which there's a great long list of relations. All you need to know is certainly you need to know that this is always true, so you don't even need to mention it that the, these commute, then you just need to know which uh, tags dominate the others, and then you get this relation, okay? And so that's all, everything is contained in that. And then there's one more relation, and that's uh, when we get um, an R4 move, and then you can uh, commute these, um, so AI and BI can commute or AI, BI is BI bar AI, depending on which one of these is. Um, I don't know why there's an equal sign there, shouldn't be, should be a comma. Anyway, so we've got the relations. Some of the relations are allowed, some are not. And then this quotient monoid is denoted by MNK, where K, curly K, is the not theory. Right, now you can define a group from this monoid by groupification. And we define inverse by a new set of relations. Now you see why we only chose the generators to be in T plus, because we want to put in um, AI, AI bar is AI bar, AI is one and if they're next to one another, and <coughs> that becomes the inverse element. If 
a bar is a, then we just get a i squared equals one, okay? But if a bar is not equal to a, then a i is not equal to a i inverse. Well, at least technically. So we've got BNK is the groupification of this monoid by adding inverses as above. So this is the summary of what's going on. So a generalized knot theory K is a groupoid with objects, the tagged diagrams and morphisms generated by the allowed Reitermeister moves. And a knot is a component of this groupoid. So associated to a knot theory K, there is a sequence of monoids, MNK, with generators AI, BI, etc corresponding to the tags a, b of k. These generators always satisfy a commuting relationship. In addition, there are extra relations added according to what our moves are allowed or satisfied by the theory. And there's a groupification map from mnk to bnk, where bnk is a sequence of generalized break routes. Okay, so now we have a question. When is this map eta injective? Um, and all the examples I know, they're injective. So maybe they're always injective. I don't know. Um, so let's look at some examples. The original break groups, um, correspond to real crossings, classical knots, and have generated sigma i. <clears throat> and this relation here, which um, you, can, you can say is that um, r, um, r uh, is, dominates r. Okay, that's another way of looking at it. Uh, the twin groups, uh, twn, corresponding to planar doodles and the generators di, they only have an extra relation. This is di squared equals one. They don't satisfy any cubic equation like this. That's, that's the whole point. Uh, two more Bray groups with one tag. Uh, the group of symmetries of degree n. Okay, so this is just flat, flat knots, which are pretty uninteresting. Um, but this uh, group, which you get, is, of course, very interesting. So it's got fi squared is 1 and fi fj fi equals fj fi fj if the distance apart is 1. And then we can take shadow braids. So these are from knot theory, which has got no R moves at all. It's just diagrams. and it's got no extra relations. It's got the commuting relation because that's always the case, and um, but no other ones. Okay. Now there are natural maps um, from these shadow braids to ordinary braids just by taking a shadow braid and attaching tags to it. I mean, you can do that to any any generalized braid group. Um, and, and then you can also go from BN to SN just by um, making the inverses equal to uh, themselves. And similarly with here, here, here you just add the relation uh, sigma i inverse equals sigma i to get here. And from here to here, you just put in that um, there's, a, there's a, uh, a relationship, something like that, for the, for the Ds, okay? So the kernel of these right-hand maps are called pure braids, whatever braid they're in. Um, and so SN is definitely a final, if, if you think of this as a, as a, as a um, as a, uh, Uh, forgotten the word. Um, it's um, it's a final element or a, a, 
a final element of a category, isn't it? Object, I think, is what you're looking for. Final object, that's the word, yeah. Okay, so final object of a category. And, and perhaps this is an initial object, I don't know, but it, it's, um, it's, it's always there at the beginning. Um, so, but then we can add, if there's more than one tag, then the extra relation is defined by dominance. Okay, so the singular braid group has two sorts of generators, sigma i and si. The sigma satisfy the usual relations. The dominance relations, sigma dominates s and sigma inverse dominates s. So you get <coughs> these mixed relations here. And, um, and there's an R4 relation corresponding to the twist. Okay, so sigma i, si is si sigma i. The virtual tag V dominates everything. And so for any virtual braid group, I mean, you take a braid group which hasn't got the virtual crossing and you add it. And then you get these relations here since the virtual tag dominates everything. Um, and since VI squared equals one, you get this relation as well. And uh, as a consequence of this, every generator AI is conjugate to every other generator AJ. The, will the weld tag W dominates, but is dominated by the real tag, but not by the negative real tag. So for welded braids, uh, hope I've got this round the right way. We don't have this relation, but we do have this relation, okay? These are the two forbidden moves. This is the first forbidden move, and this is the second forbidden move. And, uh, uh, so one of them is allowed, but not the other. Um, and then an exercise, you can see if you can find the extra relations needed for the free braids. Um, I don't know if free braid is quite the right word. I don't know if it's a free group in any sense, but um, anyway, it comes from free, free knots and virtual braids with generators sigma i, v i, and the swap braids with generators sigma i, v i, and the extra R4 relations, which I mentioned earlier. So I'm going to give you a picture of some free knots, okay? So, well, <clears throat> this is uh, the smallest free knot defined by its um, chord, chord diagram, okay? And this is what it looks like in practice. So the free knots just have um, these virtual type crossings and flat crossings and the relations which I um, said earlier, it would, it would, these were defined by Manchurov, who pondered whether such a, there was a non-trivial free knot. Anyway, he soon found this, and this is a... Manchurov says that they were first defined by Turayev. Oh, right. Okay. Thank you. Lou, you're, it, you're here. I exist. Uh, you exist. <laughs> I haven't made you a... <laughs> a host. It, it doesn't matter. No, okay. So, as I say, this is the the, the simplest non-trivial free knot. You can also um, get them from uh, by taking uh, a permutation from the top of the circle to the bottom of the circle and join up according to the permutation and with a bit of luck what you get is a a non-trivial free knot, which I, uh, I think you've done, haven't you, Lou? Uh, uh, with um, with the um, Hem Hemla, what's her name? I've forgotten it. Uh, Lou, no. What? What? Did you get some work on on? Um, Al Alison Hendrick. Hendrick, that's it. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, that's yeah. It. Okay, and then, uh, as I say, I don't know, I'd like to know if all monoids in bed, um, see these group presentations above appear without inverses, and so are also monoid presentations, and the natural map 
is injective in certain cases. Is it true for all cases? Um, I don't know the answer to that. The positive classical braid monoids in bed, uh, that, well, there's a proof by uh, Thurston, I don't know why, but that, that goes back earlier. The same is true for singular braids, which I proved with Colin and uh, Renan, uh, no, Jordan, sorry, that's wrong, that R, okay. And the monoid MN, uh, this is a very simple monoid, this embeds in its groupification, uh, simple proof. Um, I'm sure you could come up with a proof of that. So that, that's a question, you know, do, do these monoids always embed in the groupification? Okay. Um, now, a knot theory, as I said, a knot theory is, is a groupoid and it's regular if R2 holds. Okay. And the only knot theory I know which is not regular is the shadow um, knot theory because it hasn't got any moves anyway. So it certainly hasn't got R2. Regular knots can be represented by the closure of a braid. Okay, that's a generalized Alexander. Um, you may remember the proof of that. It's quite simple. R2 means uh, Reitermeister 2? Reitermeister 2, yeah. So as long as you can do Reitermeister 2, you can do a generalized Alexander theorem. Okay. A knot theory is normal if there is a tag which dominates. For instance, any virtual uh, knot theory is, is normal, and the reals uh, are also normal and so on. And uh, singular knot theory is also normal. In fact, everything's normal except uh, planar, um, planar, uh, um, planar, um, where are we? Uh, Planar doodles. Okay, so we'll come back to that in a minute. Um, a knot theory is normal if there's a tag which dominates. So, so we've got, let's have some Markov moves. One of them is, you could probably work this out, stabilization, you're adding a, an AN twist on the top or the bottom. So you First of all, take alpha and you expand it by one, either at the top or the bottom, and you put in an AN um, crossing or an A1 crossing in this case. So that's stabilization. Or you can take um, the um, braid and conjugate it. And that, um, that's another Markov move, M2. And then there's M3, which unless you're um, you've studied braids, you might not have come across. So what you're doing is you've got, you, you've made the braid a, a little bit bigger with adding on another string. Then you do, so this, uh, then you add an AN, then you've got another bit of braid here, and then you do an AN inverse, okay? Um, I should perhaps have done a diagram to show that, but um, you can make your own diagram. And what you're doing is then you're replacing that same thing. And instead of AN and AN inverse, you, you have BN and BN inverse. And you can also do that at the bottom. So you've got an, you hike up the braid uh, by one step. And then at the bottom, you do an A1, you do a bit of braid, and then you do an A1 inverse. And you replace that by B1 and B1 inverse, okay? So that's called an exchange move. Now, a uh, little exercise, the closure of braids, braids under these moves is the same knot. And for normal theories, these moves are all that are required to get from one diagram in braided form to another just by using these moves. 
Well, you might say, I don't need M3 if I'm talking about classical braids. And that's true, you don't need M3. But sometimes you do. And let's have a look at what the situation is. For real knots and welded knots, M3 is not necessary. So we don't need to do an exchange move for those um, braids. So if we write XAB for M3 above and call it an AB exchange, because we've exchanged an A tag for a B tag, uh, and, and we can always assume that um, braids are in some infinite uh, union. Okay, now oh, this is a bit technical here, but um, it's true. Supposing we've got three tags in a knot theory and we allow the following R3 moves, then the exchange is a consequence of the other M moves. In other words, we can eliminate XAB, we don't need it, provided all these technical conditions hold, okay? And if you want to see how the proof goes, it's like this, okay? So you just change alpha a n beta a n inverse. You do all these moves and you come down eventually with alpha b n beta b n inverse, okay? And I'll leave you if you're interested to check that. Um, right, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> well, it's- Just joking. You're just joking, okay. <laughs> For doodles, the theory breaks down. Now, the associated uh, braid theory for doodles are called twins. And uh, if I take this twin, D1, D2, D1, D2, and I think, I think I was given a hint by Scott, is that correct? Scott is probably asleep. No, I'm awake. I, ju I just don't remember the conversation. Um, okay. I, I think, I said, what about this, you said? Oh. Okay. Sure, okay, right. <laughs> anyway, if you, if you take this, this um, twin here and close it, you get the trivial doodle. But you cannot reduce it to one by these M moves earlier, okay? Uh, in fact, uh, there is a, um, an invariant you can define uh, which is unchanged by the M moves and this one is uh, not the same as the trivial um, doodle, okay? So we need another move and uh, this is something I did with, by the way, the earlier stuff is all stuff I've done with um, Andy Bartholomew. Are you there, Andy? No, okay. So um, this is stuff I've done with him, and this is this is basically the crux of the problem. You want to get from a braided situation to another braided situation, uh, the closure of a braid to the, another closure of a braid. And now, if you just put in this this little R one move, if it's if it's a normal theory, you can just push it out to the top and then, and then that's done. Um, in other words, you can take the crossing past all these, um, these, uh, these lines. But if, if you're looking at doodles, you can't do that because that would create a triple point and that's just not allowed. But what you can do is to push this up like this and then take it off so it becomes a braid, okay? So going from here to here is a special kind of braid and you multiply a braid by one of these elements. There's also a, a one which is down the bottom as well. And then that, of course, go, this is say braided on, on the left here. On the right, this is again braided. So you can go from here to here by multiplying by this, this um, element here. And that will do the job. And uh, 
Um, this, this is also, I proved this with, with Andy, uh, and it was independently proved by Go, Gotan. Um, okay, and then, so let, let's show how this works. See, suppose I, in the case of, of three, three strings, it's either D1, D2, D1, or D2, D1, D2. Okay, so if I take this, um, if I take this braid here, which I can't reduce to the trivial uh, braid by the three Markov moves, if I multiply it by D2, D1, D2, you can see everything cancels and I get D1. Okay, so that, that's an example. Alternatively, I can embed it in virtual doodles by adding uh, a virtual tag. And I know that if I add virtuals, it then becomes normal. And then normal ones, I can use those three Markov moves. And so, um, so I'm changing that this is an exchange move. I'm changing D2 and there's two appearances of D2 with V2 and V2. And now I've got, because V dominates D1, that, be, that can be replaced by V1, D2, V1. And now I can apply uh, stabilization Markov to get rid of this D2. Okay, I just, I mean, shunt this round here, D2 goes to the end and then it, it slides off. Okay, so this becomes D1, V1, V1, or V1 squared is the identity, so this is D1. So that, that's two ways of showing how this theorem works. Um, okay. Right, now, I, last, um, last week, I said, how do you find a determinant if the entries are quaternions, and lots of you knew what to do. Um, so if I take um, this uh, virtual trefoil, okay, and I could write down, I've got generators for each little semi-arc, x, y, z, t, and at every crossing, I get two relations, okay? So I can write this as uh, using, using this formula here. This is, remember, this was a, a biquandal, linear biquandal. And I get this matrix times x, y, z, t equals naught, 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 okay? Um, and you can check that is true. Um, you always, in every row, you always get a, a lambda, a minus one, and a mu minus lambda, or a minus one and a mu, depending on uh, which um, one of these two relations you're using. Okay, so you get you get the, there's if there's two crossings as there are in this case, and and we're assuming that this virtual crossing is not here, so x goes all the way around here. And it doesn't know it's crossed a virtual crossing. Same same thing for y it goes around here. But when when it crosses a real crossing, the y changes to z, the t changes to x, and so on, and introduce uh, a relation. Okay. So what do we can do? We've got this nice nice matrix. We'll take its determinant, and there it is. Uh, I put a naught down here because it's codimension naught determinant. Um, and you, you may remember when you, when you do this for real knots, you have to strike out a row and a column in order to get the determinant because the big determinant is zero. Well, this determinant will become zero if you put mu equal to one. Um, you see, right. because then the, uh, the second operation is just trivial. So in fact, you're back to being um, uh, just a, a quandle, not a biquandal. And you know that when you work out, that you use this to work out the uh, Alexander 
uh, that the Alexander polynomial, you need, um, you've only got one variable, lambda, and you have to strike off a column and a row in order to take that determinant. And then you get <coughs> the Alexander polynomial. So this is a bit like an Alexander polynomial. Um, you always have this factor of mu minus one. So you could, you could define it by, uh, by just getting rid of the mu minus one. Um, and um, I mean, it's a fact. I don't remember how it's done, but if you, if you look at the co-dimension one minors of the matrix you get when you're defining the, the normal Alexander polynomial, it's, it, uh, th they generate um, a principal ideal. It's a principal ideal domain for some reason. I don't know why. And so it's only got one, um, one co-dimension one determinant up to multiplication by units, which in, in, the, in the usual case for the Alexander polynomial, this is T or minus one. Okay, now you might do this and find the answer is zero. Okay, so here, this is the Chino knot. Okay, this is an interesting knot because it's like the sum of two trivial knots. Okay, you see, if you, if you think of this as the, of, you know, the normal sum of two knots, they're, they're the trivial knots. So, this is an example where you add two trivial knots and get something, well, which we hope is non-trivial. And so we're going to have a look at some, uh, th this incidentally, this, this method doesn't work for the Cushino knot. Uh, you just get zero each time or a, um, a unit. So we have to use something a bit heavier and remember, I talked about solutions of the set theoretic Yang-Baxter equation, and that's one, which there, there's a solution. And T is just a real variable, so it commutes with everything. And um, we've got a, we, you know, we work out a, a, a big matrix. Well, we've got one, two, three, four. So this is an eight by eight matrix of relations. Um, and all the entries are quaternions. And quite honestly, if it wasn't for Andy and his computer, we would have given up ages ago. But, you know, it's, <laughs> I, I, I suppose people could do it by hand, but, uh, you know, it's, uh, it's so, so quick with a computer. That's what computers are for. So, um, but anyway, you still got to work out this eight by eight determinant. And we don't know how to do that, except for the following method, I'm going to replace each um, i, j, and k by these two by two matrices. So this ought to be, this ought to, you know, be the, um, what corresponds to little i, and I suppose it, if it was i times the identity, you'd have a plus i down here, but that's no good because then the determinant would be minus one. And we want the determinant to be plus one, so we make this into a minus. Then we find any old two by two matrix whose square is minus one and which has determinant one. So here's one here, so we call that j. And then k has obviously got to be the product of these two, and it's that, okay? So we substitute this in this eight by eight matrix to get a 16 by 16 matrix, which we can then take the determinant and we find the determinant is zero. But that's okay because we look at the um, ideal generated by the co-dimension one determinant, okay, which we get by deleting a row and a column, and lo and behold, it has um, a greatest common uh, factor, which is 
this. And so this is 1 plus 5 over 2t t squared plus t to the fourth. You'll notice that for all values of t, it's positive, which is one of the facts about these determinants. So that shows that the casino knot is non-trivial. Um, there are other, lots of other proofs. I mean, Lou has got proofs galore. Haven't you, Lou? Yep. Yep. Was that a yes? Yes, yes. yes. <laughs> okay. So that's the proof which um, uh, I did with um, Andy. Okay, so um, I'm going to take a break now. And then next Friday, Dale is going to talk. But before I get ask Dale to say something, are there any questions? So do you okay. think the biquandal classifies, uh, or detects the virtual on that? I'm sure it does, yeah. But I have no idea how to prove it. On page 15, could you uh, show us that slide for a moment? This one? Uh, yeah. This looks a bit like the Taraya trick for showing that uh, one Reitermeister three move um implies all Reitermeister three moves. Oh okay. Hmm. Uh well there's a lot of R three moves going on here. Right, but you're also putting some two moves in by putting those inverses in. Yeah, okay. It's nice that it go it makes this nice pattern. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I'd like to see it in a diagram myself, but that's just me. I can, I can send you a pretty picture if you like, Scott. Yeah, please. Okay. I hope I've kept it. <laughs> right. Um, any other questions? Okay. So, Dale, do you want to say anything? Are you on? Let me uh, unshare this. Uh, I'm unmuted now. I'm holding. You're unmuted. The space okay. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I'm going to talk about braids and uh, different ways of looking at the classical braid groups as uh, I one of a configuration space or as a mapping class group. Uh, but then I'm going to uh, discuss De Arnois left ordering of the braid groups, which I think is a very important uh, development. And my talk will be dedicated to his memory. He passed away last September. Okay, thanks, Dale. So um, if everybody is, uh, if there are no more questions, I'll, um, I'll end now. So, bye everyone. See you. Bye. See you on Tuesday. Bye. Thank you. Thank you, Roger.